Hello, what is happening, everybody, and welcome to today's good old little cast. We're 48 subscribers. We gotta find two more today, and so we can do that cars door giveaway. <laughs> oh, we're like, we're so godly close. I did not even expect us to hit the goal, like, even just Thursday, we were at like 45, and I thought it was never gonna happen, but we're too short. So, if you guys know, like, two friends who might have interest in watching this kind of stuff, just link in my channel, make your friends watch it, because we're like, we're so close to those 50 that it is pretty much, it's tauntingly close, and I really want to do this giveaway, I got the whole thing planned out, I already know what we gotta do, and how it's all gonna go down, so. <laughs> we're totally ready for it, I am totally prepared for it. Also, on a little side note here, um... Uh, common sensibility draft is not going to be up possibly this week. I might move it to next week just because I want to give it more of a professional feel. And that is taking longer than I expected. So, might just be up, you know, like next week. But I would like to throw out a quality product to you guys. Those five favorite workshop items will be up as usual. Alright. So, we went like half the draft without even having anything at all. You know, like any, <laughs> any drafts at all any heroes at all, which means that a lot of people are going to be starting with the smaller amount of gold than you would expect, but Lich actually randoming it, which means that he'll be um, he'll be actually a factor in the early game, like a very, very big factor. And also getting the sacrifice first. It is a it is one of the best skills in the game, sacrifice, if you... or at least one of the best laning skills, because you can actually use it like to completely dominate everything. Which is why I like it so much. I. Lich is one of my favorite heroes. But yeah, we got Big Papa, H or HTK, Big Papa on Lich, HTK Pilskin, Pleaskin. I'm not sure how to pronounce that, on Dazzle. We got, Eddie's got Tourette's on Ember Spirit. We got Queen of Pain, Chill, Plus Plus. On that, and Blue Beans up on top lane on the Phoenix. And of course, yeah, Chill, Plus Plus on the Queen of Pain. Ogre Mage, I will be picked up by some Chinese letters. Same with Earthshaker, those look more Japanese. That's definitely Chinese on Sand King. And some weirdo smiley face on the Juggernaut, and last but not least, more Chinese letters playing Anti Mage. I would love to be able to read and pronounce those, but I have I have no clue. I know I only know one of those. And I can't even remember it. It's the one at the end of his name right there. I'd love to have a mouse right now, but it's the one at the end of the name. That's the only one I actually, like, I'm so familiar with and have seen before. But yeah, ne nevertheless. We have... Chill... On mid. I actually thought Ember Spirit would go mid, but he has gone bottom lane together with Big Pop. Big Pop, excuse me, and up on top lane there will be the Phoenix and Blue Jeans. And Phoenix, or Tessel, just... Just DCing right away. No worries. You're up against the 90 mage. You don't need to be in the game at all. But yeah, Earthshaker and Anti Mage are top. That's kind of a bit of a strange landing combo, but they are five melee heroes. We'll be actually having Juggernaut on mid up against the Queen of Pain. He is not doing very well on farm. He's going to get harassed a lot down there, and if he doesn't get a healing ward, he can't do basically anything. Sand King for now is jungling, and we'll be having a solo Ogre Mage Eye offlane. I'll probably have rotated it around a bit, seeing the fact that Zan King can actually somewhat do mid. He's probably their best mid hero in my eyes. Just have him go rotate mid, uh, the jungle, and then have the juggernaut, or yeah, the juggernaut in the safe lane, anti mage in off lane, backed up by Ogre and Zan King. Or not Zan King, or Shaker. So, kind of a bit of a strange lane composition here. We're not from the die already, but we'll see how it all goes. As of right now, I'm predicting a uh, the Radiant to come out on top of these lanes, and so far they actually are. This Queen of Pain doing an excellent job at denying here, as you can see, actually exceeding the amount of uh, her last or her denies are actually exceeding her amount of last hits, which means that the Juggernaut is going to be way on the behind with the um, with levels. As you can see, Queen of Pain almost out leveling uh, Juggernaut by one, and now getting her hands on the bottle. Juggernaut only managing to get two last hits right off the bat. He's not going to be very farmed coming into the later portions of the game. 
HTK, big papa. Just gonna be uh, harassing the Ogre Major. He's not really been using a uh, sacrifice the way that you should be using him. Which is to run back to the next creep wave, deny that, deny that one creep. And if you do that enough, eventually you will actually gain levels because you gain experience from sacrifice, as you can tell. Grants both experience to enemies and allies. And we actually missed first blood up on top lane. We might have a bit of a fight going here. Dazzle is in it for the chase. Entermage does have blink in a couple of seconds. But it's not going to mount to anything. I actually expected first blood to go uh, to go either middle or bottom. And we actually did see the Ember Spirit going, on the, going in on the Ogre Magi. There is enough mana for Lich, but in the end, Ember Spirit going to fall as well. God, excuse me if I sound a bit tired. I've slept way too long today. My voice is actually not prepared for this, which will become apparent later. Once you start hearing me, um, once you start hearing my voice failing, you'll know why. But yeah, Queen of Pain looking super sexy. I'm, I'm a big Queen of Pain fan. I love the hero. I'm not particularly good at Queen of Pain, but she's a whole lot of fun to play. In an extreme amount of fun. I intimate to now back on top up on top lane. I'm not really sure where. Oh, I actually went bottom of Shaker. So you have the uh, intimate solo farming safe lane, which you can say is okay up against the dash like that. You know the damage output is not huge there, so it's probably better to have the Earth Shaker rotate bottom and actually deny the Ember Spirit with a bit of farm. Earth Shaker now going in. That is very very aggressive. Ember Spirit really punishing him for that. A sleight of fist right now would be absolutely amazing to have, but. You could actually skill it unless he's gone, pointing in the stats. There it is. A bit off to the late side. Had he skilled it a little bit before, he could have actually gotten that kill. There was enough damage in it. But yeah, getting his hands on the face boots. And now has the slight of fist. It's a bit off to the early side, I would say. Unless you have, you know, like an opportunity like this. Otherwise, uh, chains and uh, flame guard is the way to go. And while you farm, you don't really need the uh, remnants, so you just keep going, uh, keep going points into those two. Up on top lane, we do have a rotation coming in here from the Earth Shaker. I'm not sure if Sanking is gonna join. It does have a level two in the Bower Strike. Which means that the Phoenix might be in a bit of danger. He's just gonna let go of the uh, Fiery Spirits. And that's gonna repel him off for now. And down on bottom lane, Ogre once again alone. I am surprised he, has, he hasn't actually died yet. He's just been passively sitting to stop and sap and XP and Lich has not been doing a very good job of denying. At least the, um, he's been doing a good job of like denying as in right click denies, but not with the uh, sacrifice, unfortunately. Now the rotation's coming in, top, Sand King. Oh, the Fissure is actually landing, but on the wrong side. They might decide to go for Dazzle instead of that, but no kill. They kind of like, uh, they got to focus their damage on one hero instead of splitting it between all of them. Because they put two heroes like semi semi low, which means that the Fissure, I would say Dazzle is probably priority target as of right now until they get up to speed. Queen of Pain, 33 last hits in not a whole lot of time. It's absolutely incredible. She's doing so well as of right now. 33 in 6 minutes. That is, um, that's about 5 per minute. Now anti Mage. He might actually eat it right here. No! The gosh darn Sonic Wave is gonna miss. Very, very unfortunate. Oh, It was like watching the TI all over again. That is super unfortunate from the Queen of Pain. This is truly Trench Tier Dota. <laughs> Not that it really matters, it's just gonna, it's gonna give us some entertaining plays like this. Yeah, down on bottom lane. Has now gotten another point into, uh, Searing Chains. I would say that Remnants are not, you know, they're not really necessary just yet. Because he does have, um, oh, they might actually go in the Ogre Mage. I'm gonna hang on to that thought because this could turn into something big. There are no chains and he just decided to retreat back out. 
but yeah, you don't really want to, when you're not taking any, like, harass or anything like that, or getting ganked, or ganking, fire, or remnants are not going to do you much good. Did you want that? Which means that maybe putting a point into, um, in the stats will actually do you a lot of good. Or just popping more into Flame Guard and uh, Searing Chains. Because eventually you'll get around to the Slide of Fist. Down the middle in Queen of Pain. It's just pushing in a bit. This Juggernaut has got nothing. Well, he does out outscore the um, end team mage. But that's because he's been so busy actually getting ganked all the time. Being up against a lineup like this is not easy. And who do we got here? Actually, we got a bit of a rotation coming in there. Queen of Pain wants to go on the Earth Shaker, and they might be able to pick a kill off of this. Anti Mage, though, he's just sitting there farming for now. Earth Shaker is probably gonna make it out, though. He just kind of ran away. But it is maybe gonna go, yep, the life of the Anti Mage and the Earth Shaker is actually gonna fall. And double kill down on bottom lane. Lich managing to take a kill as well. Did let go of the uh, Chain Frost, so could have gotten the double kill off the back of that, but. As you can see, plus the two up on top lane, that was amazing. That was just what this Radiant team needed to get back up into the game. I just saw Earth Shaker getting away. I'm not really sure why Antimage decided to jump in. Seeing the fact that he's not big and scary yet. And he's getting out damaged. And has less attack speed than the Queen of Pain, who's also more health than he is in higher level. I'm not really sure what this guy was thinking. He didn't really have any backup. But yeah, Lich managing to find two kills down there bottom lane. And now he's TPing mid to get a bit of experience. I'd say that's probably a uh, good call Earthshaker. Just doesn't have Echo Slime yet. This is a pretty common build for Earthshaker. But yeah, he doesn't have it yet. So there is no big boom. Has and no backup from anybody. Juggernaut going straight from the Morpin Mask, very, very common. Uh, probably gonna turn that into a uh, Mask of Madness as soon as he can. Sanking, still just forming up without the uh, Blink Dagger. Wonder when he's actually gonna get his hands on it. That is actually gonna, gonna spawn. I did not realize that camp would spawn. Oh, if Lich had the ulti right now, that would be truly amazing. Juggernaut taking a lot of harass here. Now they're going in on him, but it might actually be the Ogre Major who's going to fall. He did try to stall the Lich, but he's going to pay with his life with this, trying to save his Juggernaut friend. And there it is. Damage has been done. And they're having trouble coping with this. Like, big time trouble. And Zen King still just forming up. Queen of Pain. Starting actually, um, starting to become a lot more active in this game. I mean, she has been ganking a lot, but 59 last hits. I mean, she's still, she's actually sitting on the top of the last hit board while just being all over the place, which is absolutely amazing. Now going for the Earth Shaker. The Phoenix Sun is going to drop. Queen of Pain ult, she should be there, but he, she doesn't even need it. Doesn't even need the bottle for it. I'm sorry, did you say stop? Doesn't even need to bottle up for it there, just gonna get the uh, the guy anyway. So this right here is actually looking uh, pretty damn dreary for Dire side. Even though they do have the, the way better late game. Which is the thing you gotta pick off this. They have Anti-Mage and Juggernaut, one of the two strongest late game heroes in the game, but... If Raiden can manage to shut them down, which they have so far, I mean, they got a shot at it, and now they're going on the Ogre Magi. TPs are coming in from the Earth Shaker, but he should not be high enough level, nope. Not yet, but he's gonna land a triple stun. Actually, quadruple stun if you look at it. If you look at it that way, he's gonna be a, he's gonna be able to pay to pick off the uh, Queen of Pain. Excuse my English today. It is uh, slightly off to the weird side, but yeah, Sankin getting now getting his blink dagger, able to really put that epicenter to use once he starts going into the team fights, and that's what they gotta be scared of, Radiant, because they're not exactly tanky heroes, and an epicenter can destroy you. In no time at all. Zero actually in armor for the Phoenix, but we did see that down on bottom lane. Did he let go of the chain fuss for that? He did earlier.
but not on that particular play. And Dazzle now getting uh, his hands on a medallion, that's gonna make his Martin's armor even more scary. I mean, up against somebody like a Jux who relies a lot on armor and intimates as well, it's it's scary if your armor all of a sudden is robbed away from you. Queen of Pain does have the Sonic Wave. And now got her hands on a double damage rune. This could be Aoi. This could be Aoi. It's jumping in. They don't know she has it. Now, now she reveals it. There is a jump. If she wants to. And there is an ulti available. And she does have the mana for the entire Wombo combo. But for now, just going to take the tower. There is no creep wave backing them up, though. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. They gotta go, and now's probably the time. But they aren't enough to actually go. There's the Sand King there. They don't see him. Which means that if they get too close, it could be a disaster for him. And Queen of Pain is jumping very, very forward. Sand King now charging up. Blinking in. Boar Strike. There's the Phoenix Sun, though, which could become a problem. Earthshaker now dropping the, uh, the Echo Slam on top of one single Dazzle. Might have been a bit overkill instead of just committing a totem for it. But yeah, they're chasing him. Totem's taking too long to activate though, so you should be fine. But yeah, Sand King Ultimate right on time. Pretty much, except for the Phoenix, but that was just pure bad luck. Regeneration. But Phoenix managing to stay alive throughout that. Ember Spirit though, that's a guy they gotta be careful for, because he's pretty much their late game, their entire late game. And if he gets more farm than anti and Juggernaut, he could become a very, very big problem. Especially especially because he is as elusive and as mobile as he is. If you get a proper Ember Spirit on your team, you can do a lot. And this guy seems to be farming uh, way out of anybody's league. This looks a lot like a... Uh, probably a 16-17 uh, minute, 16, minute uh, Battle Fury. And the push is imminent as of right now. They know that the Echo Slam is down. They know that the Epicenter is down. And there is a lonely Juggernaut sitting up there. Doesn't see the Lich pass by though. He needs to catch him out one on one, on one if he uh, expects to make good use of the Omni Slash. That's pretty much what Jux is good at. He's good one versus one. Pretty much up against any hero. If he can get him isolated and then jump him, he's got it. There are of course guys like OD who can Astral and Disruption as well and stuff like that, but... Inevitably, he's, he's pretty good against uh, pretty much anybody. And once he gets farm, you know, he's gonna... Everybody knows what a Juggernaut with farm is pretty much unstoppable. Same with the Nancy Mage. Now Ogre Mage are getting caught out. Queen of Pain dropping that ulti. But Sanking, beautiful Fisher there, and the Remnant not even, Oh, that's very, very unfortunate. Try to get the Remnant off to the other side, but just too much damage and the rotation was very, very good coming in here. Dazzle getting his hands on a good old Bounty Rune while the Lich is currently occupying mid. Very, very solidly, it does actually have a Blink Dagger, which is... Usually I'll go for four staff, but you know, this Lich is actually um, doing rather good. He's got four kills, which means half of his entire team's kills is off of him. So he's doing rather good. Pretty common ward, yeah, I should say. <laughs> if you look at it, Lich. Double damage, Double damage Lich. Oh, that could be actually a... Uh, that would have been a tasty target to jump in on that one right there. Jump in on those two. He is armored up. He's probably intending to go for it. Now Queen of Pain, the first to jump. Lich going for the ultimate. Did not get it off. Ember Spear now coming in to clean up. As well as Phoenix. Ogre Magi pretty much gone. Juggernaut just... I, I'm not sure what this guy's doing. Just running around for now. Sand King now coming back in on top of the Phoenix. Nice little save there by Dazzle. They could probably get the Juggernaut. Oh no, just wasting the Omni Slash on that. 
very, very close to. I don't think you want to chase them into this. Maybe they actually do. Zanking is very, very low. But they're not able to get him. There it is. That's not that get him with the poison, but he should fall. Almost fall as well. So very, very chaotic fight there. Juggernaut going in and then heading back out again. And Ember Spirit and Dazzle almost dying. We see up on top lane Lich. Just duking it up with the engine mates. If the Lich had gotten the ulti off, it would have been so much better fight for him. And now the first Battle Fury is done for Ember Spirit. So his Sleight of Fist is going to hurt a lot more now. That's pretty much when you get your Battle Fury, you'll start snowballing as Ember Spirit. Because you'll start to be able to farm up with pretty much everything you got. And with the Illusion Room, that right there should be a very, very dead bottom tower. Sanking. Oh, okay, he's just TPing in and blinking back. Earthshaker now got his hands on his Blink Dagger. 18 minutes in, it has come at the cost without, like... They don't have wards, basically. They don't have any wards at all. But he does have his Blink Dagger, which means that he will be able to uh, drop some big Echo Slams. Does actually not have it, just popped it not too long ago. I think that was a uh, misclick because he was just hitting back to base. Might have been what the smiley face was for. And you're gonna farming for that Yasha. But the push in on mid lane, I mean, they're gonna have to eventually stop them, stop these pushes from happening. And the recipe for the Yasha coming down to actually Queen of Pain dueling out with the anti mage up on top lane. Did not even realize that would uh, that would go down now, Lich. Coming back in, maybe for a counter initiation. It's just gonna force them back for now. There are four heroes rotating in, so we didn't gotta be careful. There is a Juggernaut with an Omni Slash and Lich with no Chain Frost, so it's not in the Dyer's favor. Or Radiant's favor, excuse me. And Queen of Pain now going for a uh, Naked Axe, which is something I do not applaud. Like at all. You gotta go Orchid first. That's just out of pure principle. Orchid is one of the best times you can get on Queen of Pain, if not the best. If you go that first, without going the Axe, you can, you can always go Axe later once your ulti starts to, uh, starts to kind of uh, lose its meaning. You know, you'll have like a little extra boost, but Orchid is an extraordinarily good item actually get for Queen of Pain and the Sun is actually gonna drop Juggernaut trying to get his hands on the Phoenix but the dive is gonna be able to have him come back out and Queen of Pain now wanting to go for the kill there is no mana left for the Juggernaut and there is a blink up unavailable and there it is and that's the moment he knew she knew she'd fucked up because she's getting juked by a Juggernaut there it is final kill and now the chain fast has been dropped only gonna only gonna actually connect on Ogre Magi. And Lich is gonna drop as well. Now Sand King wanting to duke it out. Probably shouldn't have. Queen of Pain might decide to actually chase this. She is gonna. Doesn't really want to stay within that. It's just gonna bottle up and wait for uh wait for him to come out. There it is. It's coming out. She could go for him. It would be way too risky though up against up underneath the tier 3 and it didn't enable the uh, anti to push a tower so the fight recap actually in the uh, Dyer's favor plus the tower which is at 10 HP which was then which was killed by the, uh, the Dyer. Bit of an unfortunate timing for that cliff to uh, stop working but Ember Spirit actually doing an incredible amount of damage if you look at it. It's doing almost 200 per hit, and imagine that with sleight of fist and a bit of and a bit of cleave. So as of right now, this guy is this guy is pretty scary. Antimage is uh, properly farmed as well. He's closing on his battle fury. There it is. It's actually done now. And Queen of Pain, looking at what maybe could be a BKB. I'd say that's a proper. That's a, that's a good. Uh, that's a particularly good item in this. Uh, in this particular game, because you're looking at an epicenter, which is magical, sandstorm, which is magical, burst strike, which is magical, all of Ogre Magi spells, magic damage, earth shaker as well, magical, magical, magical. 
Omni Slash is of course physical, uh, but Mana Void is a magic, magic spell, so doing rather good. It is a properly good item to get in this game. I would still say Orchid would beat that, but now actually jumping into the Earth Shaker. Not really sure what's happening there. They're just kind of walking into each other. And it's going to come in Nolte. Now the Sanking is jumping in on top of the screen of Bane. It's going to come in Nolte, but she should be able to make it out. Just fine, and that's a uh, long cooldown for the Sand King, and Queen of Pain can afford to blow that ulti because of the, the uh, short cooldown with the Aghanim Scepter. And now we might see a clash down here on bottom lane, Omni Slash. Coming out on the ledge, so. Juggernaut gonna get himself a teeny tiny bit more farm. He is actually, uh, has actually got quite a, lot, got quite a lot of gold in the bank. He's actually out farming, um. Antimage as of right now, but that's only because Antimage has died so so many times. Currently Queen of Pain is sitting on the money. Could probably get her hands on a um on the Mithril Hammer now. But yeah, down on bottom and juggernaut now getting his ultimate orb. That right there is gonna be a match style. And I feel that would be a not actually a very good choice, um, because those Manta Illusions are going to get completely torn to pieces by the Sonic Wave. Um, and they're not going to help him out with the Lich ulti if he if Lich decides to get an Aghanim Scepter. Um, I could see it working on the Anti-Mage because of the uh, Mana Burn, but not on the Juggernaut in this particular game. I would say a Sanjin Yasha would be a much better choice. Because it does cost a lot less as well. Now up in the jungle, that is Queen of Pain having a lot of trouble. The sun is not there, and she's actually able to blink out. Incredibly. Antimage now trying for the chase, though. There is an ulti available if they wanted to. Sunray is dropped. Oh, it's popped, and there it is. Antimage getting her uh, sent to the Queen of Pain. Ogre Mage, and now they actually did the engagement off the back there. Ember Spirit decided he wanted to join in. There is a slide of fist available. And that right there is one dead Ogre Mage, and now the Epicenter coming out, not really connecting on anybody. Jumping in on uh, the Ember Spirit, who's able to suck up all, most, most of all the damage from the Flame Guard. Magic of Sword, 500. And good fight there for, uh, for Radiant. Because as you're going to see, I mean, if he only hits some, uh, it's about 10 pulses for 110, he's going to soak up half of the Sand King's uh, ultimate damage with that. And if he gets it off late... And doesn't land the first couple of hits, and or uh, Ember Spirit's not gonna take any damage at all. So that right there is your top tower gone, and Ember Spirit currently snowballing, big time out of control. And gold, they're still not, they're still hanging on though. Dire side, anti mage, pushed in bottom a little bit. Now Ember Spirit getting his second battle fury, so he's got that going for him. Now he has, he has a lot of cleave. We'll see it here. Come on, use your slide of fist, my man. It's actually just gonna stack it, which would make a lot more sense. And they know they're coming. Earthshaker gonna drop the fissure. Now coming in Sand King. And Juggernaut. Should be able to Omni Slash this. Yep, he is, and that's gonna soak up the remaining of that damage. There is an ulti available. If you wanted to drop it, there it is. Gonna be able to pick up pretty much everybody with that. Actually, hitting everybody. Queen of Pain now coming in to clean up the mess. That Dyer has created, and they're gonna trade it uh, not entirely evenly. If she does get their hands on the Antimage, they would definitely be able to, but Antimage, she's gotta blow that ulti. No, he doesn't. Apparently. And that right there would have been a lot of damage in the fact that, that right there is level 2 ulti. I have no idea why he put he didn't put points in level 3, but she would have been pretty much gone. Very, very close to. And there's the BKB done for her. So as you can see, the fight recap is going the way of Dyer just because it was a more important hero dying in, the, in that. But if you look at it, the team fight of Radiant is very, very strong. Because of the uh, whole combination with the, Lich, uh, with the Lich Phoenix Sun and the Queen of Pain ulti. If they can get him lined up properly, they got the fight. Ogre Magi trying for that Agnum Scepter. Basically, become the spam spell hero. 
for the uh, the cancer hero. Antimage actually oh, dying to Dazzle and Dazzle dying to Antimage. See Dazzle actually got the Antimage first so no experience for him at all and Tazzle getting quite a lot of that. And looks like he's actually going for a sheep stick. Which is something I did not expect, but could potentially work. Sheep stick would not be a bad choice in this game. Especially having against heroes like these. And all Limber Spirit actually has to do now is pretty much get crits. Crits, crits, crits. Loads of crits. So whenever he has a uh, he's jumping, he has a chance to crit for cleave. Or to cleave for a crit. And Lich starting to work on his own Aghanim Scepter. Antimage, actually that right there looks like a Yasha. And Karina Pain is uh, getting caught slightly by the Sand King. Now the Fisher is dropping. Ember Spirit is able to just remnant out of there. And is not going to drag the uh, Juggernaut with it. And now the ultimate is going to blow. Let's see how this one is actually going to turn out. Sand King eating some of that. Bouncing between Juggernauts. Now Sand King. Down onto Ogre. Nope, actually onto the Creep Wave. Good ultimate there. Good in disengagement. They should be able to push off the back of this. Because most of them are low. Pretty much all of their supports are like half health. But yeah, Queen of Pain. She's now lining up. Getting up in line. Does have an ultimate up on the ready. A max level ultimate with Aghanim Scepter. Echo Slam is dropped. Now the Sanking is diving in. It's almost gonna get taken out. There you go. That's a double kill for the Ember Spirit. Sun is also dropped, and Entomage is forced back with the Juggernaut, and they're getting pounded in the team fights. That was not a good, a very good Echo Slam, though. The range was just not enough. Like the radius, the blast radius was not high enough. So now they should be able to start taking high ground, even though they have half of their ultimates down. Now all the ults he's down. Entomage could get a big boom off of this. Because there's a lot of mana missing. There is a one hell of a lot of mana missing. But he's not. They're just gonna take for, take it for what it is. And maybe even lose middle racks. They are gonna be back up in a couple. Sand King with the ultimate. Herb Shaker doesn't have it, but I mean a uh, a well placed epicenter would be very very good. And there you go, that's actually the Sand King's smoke. But as of right now, Radiant dominating this game. 10k up in the uh, 10k up in that worth, but you gotta remember it is an it is a juggernaut and an anti-mage they're up against. And this juggernaut is going for Scotty, which I really feel is a good choice. An anti-mage almost done with this uh Yasha. Gonna enable him to be a lot more mobile than he actually is. Dazzle once again disconnecting. And Ember Spirit getting his hands on crits. And not even wasting any money at all. Just gonna send his stout shield back to base to get sold. The Ember Spirit now looking at crits together with that cleave as well. So his damage is tremendously good. Like, extraordinarily good. Dazzler. Is DC now actually got the Sheepstick finished. Which is going to be um, an amazingly... It's it's going to be some nice little benefit for him. Sand King trying to think... He's trying to build for an Aghanim Scepter so right now. Went the Ogre Club first because... Sand King is a strength hero. I'm probably going to go for the uh, Magic one second. But yeah, Dazzle is now back, and Ember Spirit and Queen of Pain are now pushing in bottom lane. Experience per minute, currently sitting on the Queen of Pain, but Ember Spirit just has the higher net worth. 31 minutes and double Battle Fury and Crystals. That's not half that bad. Earthshaker, I think he wants to actually go in, in on this. There is no Creep Wave. Now there is. If he wants to, he could do it. They are quite a lot of heroes there. And the push is imminent. If he wants to jump, it's got to be before too many of the creeps go, and he might actually do it now. There it is, got to drop the Echo Slam second. You definitely want to go that first, because that's going to enable the Queen of Pain. 
to just blast you to bits. Juggernaut now jump at everybody. There's the big time Omni Slash and Sand King. Gonna be in with the late initiation. Beautiful turnaround there by Juggernaut. Getting himself a triple. Nope. Double kill. Xantamage got his hands on the Lich. On the Lich. But yeah, that's what they gotta watch out for. They gotta keep creeps near him. And Earthshaker gotta remember to use Echo Slam first when he jumps in instead of Pop and Totem and then Echo Slam. Because um, it's gonna stun anyway because of the Aftershock. But yeah, that right there is gonna be a tier 1 bottom gone. And I believe in the turnaround of this. This Juggernaut is getting quite fat. As you can see, his net worth just surpassed Queen of Pain. And it's now very, very close to the Ember Spirit. And he's gonna take a Roshan as well. Once he takes that Rosh, it's a, it's it's done for him. He's uh, he's up in he's up in the lead now. His Scotty is also done. It's gonna enable him to be a lot more efficient as a fighting. They're not able to take or to contest that Roshan. Juggernaut's just he's gonna take it too fast, and he's doing it solo as of right now. I actually want to go for some damage items here next. Now the rotation is coming in from the Dazzle and the Lich. You should probably not pop the um, pop the ultimate because there is nobody to ultimate too. Now Sand King is actually just going to pop him up on the cliff there. I don't think Juggernaut can get back down. It's a very, very unfortunate thing. Earthshaker, they're just sitting there. And Dazzle is going to take the Roche. What a Roche steal. What a Roche steal. Wow. Juggernaut gonna have to TP back. That is very, very unfortunate. That was bad play by Zang King. Oh, that was unfortunate. I don't think I would have forced staff him up in the cliff there. You could, they could have gone for a uh, counter initiation with the um, with the epicenter and the Juggernaut just like jumping in with the uh, with the Omni Slash. Clip. Not really sure why they didn't do it. And now that bottom tower is gonna go. There is in a there is an echo slam available, but he's just sitting mid. Meanwhile, Antimage actually pushing in their uh, top lane. And the TP backs are imminent. They gotta watch out now. They need to back off because it's five versus four, and they're missing Ember Spirit. Unless he used the remnant to get back, which he of course did. Smart move, my man, smart move. So, if they're gonna fight uphill, they need the eyes up on high ground. To be able to see what's coming. All of the ulties are, every single one of them. Now, the jump is in. The Phoenix Sun is gonna go up at first. Sanking is jumping in. Everybody pretty much going down. Sun is gonna get popped. But Juggernaut. Having trouble coping with the damage, and this right here is going to be a 3 4. Pretty much a, uh, actually a 4 4 5. That was a uh, buyback from the A from the Sand King. If they can get him the second time, they'll be a dieback. They'll be a disaster. Now jump it back in again. Is for Stanford himself out. Just going to try to disrupt him. They can go for uh, melee racks, and there are no other buybacks that they need to be wary of. Those, those right there are looking like some pretty dead mid racks. Or bottom racks, excuse me. Which means super creep statement. And now Sand King is actually back in. And Queen of Pain, they should be able to uh, to pick this off. Or to pick him off. Queen of Pain is just like sitting up there, just waiting for him to come back out of the, uh, out of the sandstorm. But apparently we got some trash talking coming to me. Mage Bane, that was probably anti mage. Yep, he's probably gonna be farming all game. All game, every game. And they're actually going thrown as of right now. They're not concerning themselves with the top tower. The fight is in their base as of right now. Earthshaker is gonna fall. And now Queen of Pain, or the Phoenix, is actually gonna go down. Juggernaut is handling the damage. We're just handing out the damage, but he should fall again as well. Has decided to go for the spin back into base and should be able to. Now Queen of Pain is actually gonna fall off the back of this. But they are down a middle lane tower. 
And now the fact that I don't warm up before it's just going to show an Ember Spirit. Now gonna get the anti mage. Yow cheese. But yeah, now the fact that I did not warm up my voice is starting to show, like, properly. And GG is called by the Sand King. <laughs> I would say that's a bit early still. I've turned around worse than this. It's looking bad, but I've turned around worse. All they gotta do is be patient and take their chances. And take the chances that they get. And not, like... Being like, taking, taking things without compromise, like... Take the kills they can get and leaving the ones they can't. Which is like, which just means that they shouldn't chase. They need to fight on their own terms. This is like a, uh... Super good, like, turtle philosophy. If you want to, um... If you want to pay, play a turtle strat... You play without giving anything away. Because when you play aggressive, there's a chance that you're gonna give up some, uh, some big plays. And it's... Well, like, not like big plays, but <coughs> give up some dumb kills. And if you play like Turtle Strat, you just take the kills that you can get and you don't chase. You just take the things that you can get and then retreat back out and try to take things, you know, on your terms. Which is amazing if you're off to the behind because it's going to enable you to uh, actually get back into the game without losing a whole lot. But now the Daedalus is up for. This Ember Spirit. Is that his ultimate orb? It is. It's pretty much the Scotty. The Scotty is close to being done. So he's gonna hurt. He's already hurting, but he's gonna hurt even more. Queen of Bane also getting her hands on the Ghost Scepter. Does have an Orchid of Malevolence now, which is gonna be absolutely amazing. If she can get a uh, an e full Blade as well, that would mean the world for her, because that damage... It is actually pure, so it's not really gonna get amplified. Oh yeah, that's right. It's changed. It it should change the um. Is it pure starting out? I'm not entirely sure. I gotta figure that out at some point. That is when Steph would love to help me out. The guy, my co-caster, and now Lich, gonna get obliviated by the mana void up on top lane. Did go a bit greedy. And the push is in from the Ember Spirit. Now we're going to be pushing up to high ground with this Dire Team, or Radiant Team. We're actually not going to push up just yet. Currently Dire Team, they're just turtling off the, on their own towers. Right now, Attackies would be a very, very good choice. Anti-Mage, down trying to go through backdoor protection without actually having a TP. I don't think he's going to be able to. But he's just going to be taking names for now. now Queen, or uh, Phoenix is going to try to disrupt his, uh, his push a little bit. Should be semi-successful down there. The anti mage has no way of coming back. As of right now, he's just gonna be tangling with the Phoenix. But now, the Earth Shaker is gonna go down before you can even get anything off. Now the Omni Slash is a minute. There are just too many units though. Juggernaut is not actually gonna fall. They're gonna be able to get the Dazzle for the uh, Ogre Mage Iron. And the Earth Shaker, Sand King, should be able to just walk out of there. And they gotta try to end it now. There is no backdoor protection on these, so they can just start damaging and... Ogre Magi is back with the Juggernaut. Oh, is he gonna be able to make it out? He should be. Yes, he is. Queen of Pain, they're playing like way too aggressive here. Now right there is a middle tower which is about to fall. And if you look at it, this Ember Spirit is just way too far. This Scotty is pretty much done. Only needs one more ultimate orb. Now Intermitch, getting his hands on his Basher, finally. Um, only got the Mad Style, Battle Fury, and Vladimir's. Arms for the dead. There is actually a Roche pack up and available. That could be a good one for the Juggernaut to solo. Not really sure why he's getting a Perseverance. There are some options to it. There are a couple of options to it if you could shovel at me. But we do have a bit of a fight going down here. Juggernaut. Now getting engaged upon Earthshaker, wanting to get in on the fun. Not really going to be able to, only going to be able to stun him for a little bit. And now the Lech Holtz, is going to come up. Remember, that is global, so he's going to be dragging it all the way back. 
and Earth Earthshaker should fall off the back of this, and that, that creep wave is pretty much gone. The Antimate won't have that. Now Queen of Pain wanting to go on the Sand King is committing a lot to get him, but she is going to be able to find him in the end. Ogre Magi. Actually, Antimate, just trying, <coughs> just trying for the uh, for the little turtle strat there. Or not turtle strat, uh, split pushing strat. He's basically a rat right now. Which they find rather amazing. Ogre Magi. It's actually gonna get Zans on the Phoenix there mid. So they did manage to get a pick off. But they don't really want to push and I can understand that. They need one big team fight and they need to go everybody down mid. That is one big creep wave coming in on top. That is tasty for the anti mage and for the German arm. That perseverance, that right there looks a lot like a battle fury. I don't think that's the particular item he wants to go. Because it's good in the early game, but it doesn't give you a whole lot of anything else. I mean, it gives you cleave, but cleave is not what he needs. He just needs more damage to amplify that crit to try to take people out like super fast. There you go. If that is unfortunate, that's going to bounce between a pain. And she is just going to drop the Ethereal Blade. And they're not going to TP out. And he's got his hands on the Battle Fury. It is slightly off to the late side, but... The item choice is not the best now. Ember Spirit, he doesn't have a Remnant down as far as I can tell. If they can chase him now... Okay, he did. He had a Remnant and he's got his Scotty now. That man is big. <laughs> and Shemage just trying his best to, um, to rat this. He wouldn't pretty much benefit a lot from a uh, from a pair of BOTs like right now. Oh, Mr. Courier. And now the Ember Spirit once again getting jumped. He is in deep, deep waters and they managed to get him. Juggernaut taking that kill. That was an important one. That was very, very important. That's gonna put the uh, Juggernaut right up to speed. Sanking still seems like he's uncertain as to what he's working on. He does have a lot of more spell resistance, but... Invisibility. He's like halfway towards this uh, Aghanim Scepter. There's a Roshan up, up and available if they want him, and neither team has got wards. Is warding that area. Enter Mage. Once again on the push bottom lane. Does have quite a lot of gold and also enough for a buyback. If needed. Ogre Magi now, do you see? They gotta wait for that. He waited for them. So. And both teams. That's, com that's common courtesy between both teams. It's nice to see. That's nice to see somebody who actually waits for a change. Dazzle. What is this? Getting Crystalless. <laughs> Oh, uh, I would have said a Shiva score or something like that would have been good, but screw that, we're going Crystals. <laughs> Crystals, Dazzle, DPS, Carry. That is amazing. And we're just going to skip past this. Nope, Ogre Major Eye has reconnected, so we'll be seeing the game going again. And Mame, that's pretty good for the uh, Phoenix. There's already a Shiva score up and running, but a mechanism or something like that, like that would be good. Lich. Also got his Aghanim Scepter. I'd say a Refresher would be absolutely devastating at this point. And Lich pushing in bottom, or no, not Lich, anti Mage pushing in bottom lane, and that tower is looking uh, pretty good, pretty dead. As of right now, his ratting is working. Yep, that right there is a dead bottom tower. I'm not sure why they glyphed it, because he's probably not going to be moving on. Okay, he is. But yeah, he was probably going to be moving on, was what I was trying to say. Believe it or not, that was what I was trying to say. But yeah, the push is imminent up from top lane. He will need to TP back and Ember Spirit now back, so he is uh Intimage is forced back as well, but the top lane towers are in jeopardy. As of right now. Juggernaut now coming in, he did activate the Mask of Madness a bit prematurely, now dropping the healing ward. Antimage now back up and running. And Dire or Radiant, they're playing very, very passively. Both teams turtling like crazy here. Uh, 
and they were buffing up anti mage. So that's probably a good idea, seeing the fact that he is almost the main damage dealer here. I mean, he's splitting between him and Juggernaut. And he's still just farming up. Anti mage is not done farming until minute 50 at least. He has 360 something last hit, so actually surpassing the Juggernaut by 100, which is a very, very significant amount. Yeah, Juggernaut now up in second on net worth. Which is gonna matter a lot in, the, in this next fight. Both teams still are not really adamant on going. I would say that the Sand King would be on the initiation, but he might actually get scouted here. Does have the mobility to go away, however. But I would say that it would be him on the initiation. If they can get him together and just him jump in with the uh, Earth Sugar to follow. And then having his Echo Slime before the creeps die off, they've got it. Oh, Earthshaker, he's in a bad spot. Able to, be, able to blink back out. And now the Omni Slash is dropped. Phoenix Sun coming in. A bit of a slow start to this fight. But everything is pretty much going down. Anti or actually, um, Sand King did not get the biggest of ulties off. And Earthshaker got to fall now as well. Ogre Magi and Anti Mage are going are gonna to drop. And now they want to get this Ember Spirit. And they got him. But the middle towers are gone. They're not paying attention to their own throne. It's getting taken by Creeps. Creeps MVP. Anti Mage in trouble. He is able to uh, get back up, but nobody is paying attention to the throne. And now, Phoenix. They want to get his hands on her. Him. Something like that. But their throne is getting taken. And they don't know. Anti Mage, he's going to try to blink in. To try to drag him off. But that is one giant ass creep wave, and the rest of the creeps are trying for that fort. Anyways, <laughs> he's not able to handle the damage. Sand King, trying to do his best up in this, but the, the throne is probably gonna fall. Sure looks like it. It is so gosh darn close. It's down to 300 HP. But they can push off this. They can push it. Insert awesome push it to the limit music. But they need they need somebody to defend and they're not. I mean they need somebody to defend that creep wave push up bottom. And that is gonna be Yip Sand King. Who's now got an Aghanim Scepter. But they can push a long way. The buybacks only on Lich and Dazzle, and they're pretty much up anyway. This is uh this is close. This is very, very close. There's no more backdoor protection, and they don't even care about the Queen of Pain ulti anymore. They just want to get those towers. Tower has and if they're greedy, they're going up high. And Antimate sure as hell is. Now Shaker coming in. Big Echo Slam. Lich, is he going to drop the ball? There it is. Now going to drop it, and then Juggernaut just jumping between everybody, doing a hell of a lot of amount of damage. Radiant, they're not able to handle it, but there's no backup for the Juggernaut. He can pretty much only get the Dazzle and probably retreat back out of there. If he's greedy, he's going for the Lich. And he is. Greedy Juggernaut. But now, the... Ball is gonna drop. And buyback from Juggernaut, and buyback from Lich. This is one crazy game, and Ogre Major just desperately trying to defend bottom. He's pretty much fallen out of this game. Like, he has not been a presence at all, which is probably... He's probably the guy you want for the D-push. But yeah, Sand King. If they can get a proper, um, proper good team fight off, they've got it. And as you can see, the net worth is now back in. It's still 10k up in Dyer's favor, but with the towers, it's pretty much over. Now Sand King jumping in very, very prematurely. Under the Lich, pretty much getting all the damage onto him. Probably not that good of an idea. And who is that actually falling? That is the Anti Mage and the Juggernaut are gonna fall. This should be GG. And there you go. That is the. Sand King as well, and how's the buyback looking? No buybacks on anybody. That is GG. It's over. There is no way to come back from this. They tried. They tried for it, but Queen of Pain is going to be able to take that victory, probably. Yep, there you go. That's the Phoenix coming in, and Queen of Pain is absolutely fine. And that's the team wipe that we're going to end on. But anyway, thank you all so much for watching. Um, I just wanted to get this one out there as well as the sets of the week just because we're so close to 50. Um, if we could get it like today, that would be absolutely incredible because that was the deadline. I, I said to get 50 before March a while back.
And if we can get our hands on 50 before March, that would be, I'll be so honored. Um, and also, go check out my vlog if you don't know what I am all about. It's just, it's, it's on the front of my channel page. Um, yeah, go check that out. If you don't know what I, you know, me, I'm about, go, go watch that. And I'll be doing another one tomorrow to kind of, you know, go in more in depth with who I am. So, but anyway, I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.